our next session is a fireside chat between Mr. Nawal Ahuja, co-founder Exchange for Media Group, and with D. R. Balki, a leading filmmaker. R. Balki made his feature film debut with Chinikam. He wrote and directed this film while he was chairman and creating head of uh, creative head of Low Lintas, the advertising agency. Though always wanting to be a filmmaker, Balki's addiction to advertising made him spend over 27 years in the business, leading India's most talented team and communication specialists to create work for hundreds of iconic brands like Idea Cellulio, Tata T, Havels, Tanishq, Unilever brands like Surfexa, Lifeboy, Fair and Lovely, Britannia, Bajaj, LG, Saint Gobain, MRF, Axis Bank, ICICI, and many, many more. And finally, when the de addiction process began, Chini Kam was followed by Pa, Chamita, Ki Enka, and Padma. I'm sure you've loved all these movies and the way he has taken the storytelling forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, once again, urging all of you to send it right away. The session is titled Beyond 2020, the visual future of content marketing. So, ladies and gentlemen, join me in warmly welcoming Mr. R. Palki and Mr. Nawal Ahuja on screen. Very warm welcome to you, gentlemen. And Mr. Ahuja, I leave the screen to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kyati. Thank you for the uh, introductions. Uh, hello, Balki. Good to see you. Hi, hi, Rahul. Hi, hi. Happy to see you safe and uh, uh, charged and geared up as always. Uh, though this session is titled uh, Content nice uh, 2020 and Beyond. Thank you. Though the session, as I said, is titled 2020 and Beyond, uh, what's going to happen to content. Let me, I, I want to make the conversation a little more holistic and uh, take you back to your roots. Uh, advertising is where you started your journey. Uh, I was uh, uh, just uh, talking uh, an hour back when we started this conference about, you know, the good old days of television when AFPs came in vogue and brands started doing advert what we used to call uh, them as advertisers, advertiser funded programs. And that was kind of a start for content marketing. You've been in the business long enough, Balki. Creative and content uh, used to be joined at the hip. You know, they used to be one and the same thing. But today with data, technology, AI, things have, things have changed drastically. What's your take on, uh, you know, where creativity and content are headed? Are they, uh, is the gulf now too wide between these two? Uh, no, I, I'm very glad about, uh, uh, you know, the, the latest uh, role that uh, advertising is playing, which is in actually uh, setting right and saying that, uh, asking a few news channels to kind of behave, otherwise, as we pull out uh, advertising, and I think that that's actually for the first time advertising is ex exercising its uh, uh, might, saying that uh, don't destroy society uh, by right. by uh, you know talking rubbish. So I think that that is I think I think the best best show of advertising so far in a long long time to dictate not actually dictate content as much as say. Um, don't put out lies out there or uh, you know do something really good that i think is the best csi advertising has done so far <laughs> yeah that's that's uh, that's uh, if i if i can call it a uh, unintended byproduct of uh, where advertising has come from creativity to the power of uh, media uh, but if i if i can ask you balki about the uh, you know creative side of advertising uh, what you've been seeing over the last 10, 12 years, you started your uh, career in the television era and then you've kind of moved on to making uh, films. Uh, today, we live in an era where the consumer is uh, distracted. Attention spans are uh, very fragmented. Uh, we started from 60 second or maybe 120 second ad commercials, which came down to 30 seconds. That came down 10 seconds and TikTok has introduced us to a world where uh, content piece uh, pieces and advertising is five, six seconds. What does it do to the psyche of a creative person uh, who has grown up making 60 second ad films to be able to uh, tell a story in six seconds? See, I, I don't believe I, it's, it's strange. I mean, um, uh, at a time when, uh, when people assume that people are doing shorter and shorter content, uh, actually, people are uh, the series are kind of really. Uh, if you look at the uh, you know the amount OTT is kind of growing, people are watching longer and longer content. 
uh, as far as as long as it's interesting, people are willing to invest eight hours, nine hours when they were when they were reluctant to invest two and a half hours before. So I think it's not about so much the duration of it, and I also believe that advertising, the basics of advertising, are still very much the same, which is. Uh, which is, it's all about an idea. It's all about how effectively you communicate an idea. The media and the domain in which it's kind of appearing may, may kind of keep changing. But even now, 90% uh, of advertising is a video or uh, some form of a story that you're telling on video uh, out That's there right. to people. It could be digital, it could be television, it could be everything else. I still think cricket is the most powerful medium that is, that is available in the country. And I, sometimes I think we kind of mistake mediums available to uh, uh, mediums available and popular uh, uh, as uh, almost effective mediums of advertising. It's not true. Uh, if it's not just about being present in a media that's extremely kind of popular or uh, or, or, a, or a digital channel that's kind of uh, used for uh, various other purposes. Uh, I don't think that necessarily advertising becomes effective in every kind of channel which people are kind of getting onto. Advertising has a role. People devour, uh, I mean, consume advertising in a certain way, and uh, uh, and they find and they really kind of shun advertising in in, in other in other places. So it, it's not about just being confused by the consumer. It's not about being being. It's not about uh, being thrown off by saying that there is so much of distraction out there. The consumer, uh, you know, you don't know what the consumer is watching. There's so many things he's kind of he or she is. Uh, on to, so it makes a creative person's life uh, a lot more confusing. No, I don't think it's true. I think uh, if you look at the last five, six years, uh, so it's strange why in the last, uh, not even six, seven, yeah, about seven, eight years, if you take it, I don't think a lot of great brands have been created in the last seven, eight years. Maybe there have been, except I can think of Swiggy, I can think of Fog, I can think of a couple of other brands or uh, of, uh, you know, new brands which have been yeah. created in the last uh, uh, seven, eight years, not which have been built on. Now, I, 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 I and they've been actually built on quite traditionally. They've been built on cricket in a very strange way, you know, right. uh, and using cricket as, as the, as the medium and nothing else. So a lot of people have tried everything else in the sun, kind of trying to go out into every media where people are kind of doing that, putting seven second video, putting a message out here, doing this, uh, a message out here. This is all kind of, you know, these are all, these are almost like um, uh, the paraphernalia. You need to just do all that to kind of uh, uh, increase the noise a bit. But that can't be the core noise. The core noise still is about where would a, a guy, where would a person like to consume advertising and where is advertising most effective? Advertising is not necessarily most effective on mediums that people are kind of frequenting. It's not necessarily so. I think that's very well said because as you uh, yourself pointed out the contradiction, content consumption is immensely growing and numbers bear that out. If you look at, you know, uh, the amount of television content consumption in India, it's gone from two and a half hours a day, 10 odd years back, it's touching almost four hours a day. Uh, whereas uh, uh, and that also means that advertisers have spent, have to spend uh, increasingly higher amounts of money to uh, reach a larger uh, number of uh, target audience. At the same time, the uh, the viewability of advertising is kind of mixed, you know. And as you said, uh, finally, uh, you know, a, a, a good creative idea is what works. Uh, tell us, Balki, uh, if you if you look at uh, uh, as you've been an ad man for so many years, if you look at the last ten years, have you seen any uh, significant change in uh, the trajectory of the creative ideas that you see on uh, television or digital, for that matter? Uh, yeah, that, of course, there have been some uh, some really interesting pieces of work. Uh, and and I, 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 on top of mind, I think Swiggy is possibly some, one of the most interesting. Actually, it's quite traditional. Swiggy is, is a very traditional piece of uh, insight, emotion, fun, humor, everything else. But done beautifully, done consistently, done very refreshingly. Uh, yes, there are a few, few things. But oh, by and large, I think advertising has gotten a lot more uh you know safer not i don't I want to say safer safer is the wrong word a lot more conservative uh a yeah. lot more um i i don't like to use the word risk averse i i because nobody wants to take a risk with their money uh oh, I, yeah. I believe i've got a lot more less ambitious you know i just think that people are more uh are, people are more satisfied if nobody curses their ad 
then who places their ad? You know, it's a strange kind of a thing. There should not be any trouble. Seems to be. I don't want to get trolled. I don't want to. You know, I don't want bad. Uh, uh, you know, comments on this. I, I, yeah, I, sure. I, don't, I don't care whether it's viral or not, or whether whether it is uh, hugely popular or not. But as long as people don't say bad things about it, it's fine. So once you come from that mindset, you're going to really. And if you look at some of the, if you you just have to look at IPL, uh, which is the most popular medium, the most expensive medium in the world, to see the standard of uh, advertising that is going on. Uh, which is quite sad because you're spending so much money. So many people are watching on the most effective platform for brands, uh, and you're you're actually playing the same game of saying, "Let me play safe. Let nobody curse me." There. So I I, I feel that's really really sad. I think overall, so advertising is also a reflection of where the country is. We've lost. Um, we don't have a sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, we are we are kind of taking things damn seriously. Uh, we're so scared. And I think this this myth of trolling. You know, every client is so uh, every client and agency is so paranoid about trolling. Trolling actually doesn't mean anything. Else. I mean, people yeah. that people need to troll. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why people are taking that kind of criticism. Uh, no consumer criticizes an ad. It's only non-consumers who criticize an ad. Okay, consumers either consume your product or don't. There are people who kind of criticize and praise. Actually, it's very funny. The praise is very very organic. You know, people love the ad. No consumer is going to say, "Wow, what an ad!" They may be just talking about it. They may quote the ad. They may kind of joke about it. The praising and the criticizing is done by people who are actually not consumers. So actually, you shouldn't be worried about both uh, in in that thing. And today, uh, people are more worried about the criticizing than the praise. Yeah. So I just feel that confusion should just be kind of ironed out once and for all. And advertising agencies, I think, should wake up and say, "It doesn't matter what the trolls are." I mean, what what's more important is who has noticed us. What are what are our consumers talking about us, and are they even talking about us? Because most advertising is not talked about. The most dangerous thing is most advertising is not talked about. Even an IPL, yeah, it's I, coming every day for sixty days, and the sheer yeah. weight of noise. You know, like the olden days, we used to say, uh, we used to have this famous example of saying that. Uh, uh, advertising agencies used to go to clients and say, "We built these brands, you know, successful brands. This, this, this." You look at what, take one look at the ad. By no stretch of imagination could it have built a brand, except if you're pumping in loads and loads of money, and every day it's hammering the consumer till it becomes almost like you know, uh, it's like the national anthem. It's coming at you every day, and it becomes a brand. So sometimes people mistake that you know, hammering as building a brand and call call it effective advertising, which is what I feel. uh it's a very i feel it's criminal from from an advertising agency's point of view to kind of take credit for something that actually money has worked and not the not the piece yeah. of work i think very interesting uh, message to uh, cmo especially i i don't know whether it's the advertising agencies who are more scared or whether the brand uh, owners are more scared about you know getting trolled but uh, that's become a increasingly uh, uh prevalent trend in the last few years and i think that's also uh, one of the reasons why uh, agencies as well as brands have become very risk averse as you said uh, and that kind of also leads to the blandness of advertising that we see what else do you think is contributing to the blandness balki risk aversion is of course clearly one thing is there uh, you know are we losing our spark of creativity because of as i said uh, too much of technology dependence are we uh, are our clients are driving too much data analytics into the uh, Uh, art of creativity no i don't think you can blame technology i think you know people confuse technology and throw this confusion of consumer uh, you know uh, scat uh, this the, the, what do you what do you call that the distraction of the consumer is a great excuse yeah. for not being able to focus themselves so i don't think that's um, that's really um, uh, uh, the 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 problem at all right i i so, still so, i still believe yeah. that uh, uh sorry go ahead go ahead no ravel you were saying something sorry i said uh, so what what do you think is one of the reasons why uh, the spark from creativity is gone why uh, you know uh, you yeah i'll tell uh, you recall when when you look at ipl and you think that a lot of uh, sad advertising is happening serious amount of money is being sunk but you know uh, very a little of that advertising is actually memorable no it's i don't know whether it is a 
whether it is this entire thing of being ambitious and being uh, more worried about the environment which we live in and misreading the environment which we live in uh, is the for shutting off your minds because at a time when uh, sorry at a time when uh, uh, content uh, writing is going through the roof and uh, some fantastic creativity is happening online in terms of yeah. content it is sad that advertising that should be leading uh, it that was actually leading cinema leading entertainment setting trends uh, for fashion setting trends for behavior is actually such a lagger uh, to the content that's being created i really think it's it's the on, the only reason to be in advertising is to set uh, a trend is to kind of contribute and say hey why don't you look at it like this or why don't you behave like this hey this behavior is nice and interesting let's do this so that newness of kind of adding something original to society or making a society think about uh it it could be a joke it could be a line it could be a it could be just a little thought it could be anything but that leading a society versus kind of following it uh and now actually so far behind it not even following it closely uh is a sad kind of a thing i think maybe it's just that maybe a lot of people feel that in this environment um, uh, uh people just feel that why do anything that's going to kind of you know anything which i do literal lateral or creative could have one kind of a rough edge here or there which i could get stoned for so maybe just kind of better be quiet and do the normal stuff with a little joke here a little joke there so satisfy my own creativity a little bit and everybody feels that hey hey not bad fun it's not boring it's okay fine and really nobody knows whether who's going to watch it or not watch it or how 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 popular it is but it goes on so i think today fundamentally a successful ad has become an ad that's not been cursed uh so it's it's a it's a very very strange kind of a scenario uh where uh, i have never felt so much of uh, i can see it around me i interact with a lot of the people in advertising so i can see see a lot of weariness in people yeah yeah i think i think you you've hit the nail on the head it's uh, it's uh, it's not uh, you know for for a creative person it's not uh, the kind of environment you want uh to do uh, to create an ad in and, and if you were to do jago right today uh i think is uh connection is switched off sorry uh sorry 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 sorry, sorry. no problem just one waiting. minute though. i'm just getting back online sorry hello i am referring to uh, yeah we can hear you uh, we can hear and see you balki uh naval i can't hear you and Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Am I audible now? Yeah, fine. So I was referring to the famous ads you created, especially for Tata Tea, uh, Jago Ray, uh, which had such strong social messaging at that time. I wonder if uh, a creative director was sitting on that brand today. would he really have the uh, kind of courage to create that kind of advertising uh, that kind of message given uh, uh, w- what is being peddled around uh, in in the business today uh it's not just the creative director's courage i think it's also the client's courage it's the same tata who did the ad uh, of tata t and the same tata sure. that had to pull out the uh, tanish cat so it's it's uh, it's also about the client and uh, uh, today i mean if you do a, if you you're questioning a politician and saying what qualification do you have um uh, uh, to kind of lead uh, lead a lead a country or lead a, a state or whatever uh, when that's the biggest organization that there is if you ask that question today you might be accused of actually pointing fingers at so many politicians uh, who are not so called qualified uh yeah. kind of you know lead the biggest organization which is the country but yeah and i think but i really feel that um, i think it's time for a fight it's time to fight it out because the fight is where uh noise is if 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 you create a noise, lot of noise trying to stop it then if you fight it you're only going to uh make it even more if you fight for the right thing i think you're going to really play a big role in viraling it i think you need to start fighting for the right thing today you do the right thing and somebody will stop you it's actually an opportunity rather than a uh, you know a rather than a problem uh, so i feel we need to start looking at fights and people coming in our way when we're doing the right thing and i say I always say doing the right thing 
uh, it, that should be seen as an opportunity and that's a sitting virality it's a sitting kind of a uh, duck to be popular uh, as a brand and i don't understand why people are not willing to fight right so tell me uh, uh, balki uh, uh, for a young creative starting career today the world is very different from what it was 25 30 years back and as you yourself uh, explained uh, how uh, risk aversion both at the agency and the brand side is uh, kind of one of the reasons why creative is creativity is being stifled what message would you give to a young creative who is starting out today i mean how do you navigate this kind of world where uh, you uh, enter the uh, world of advertising creativity dreamy eyed and reality hits you hard i i would actually uh, you know urge a lot of uh, creative people in any kind of thing young people to try and join advertising now because now is the right time you know when there's a screw up is when there's an opportunity there is no opportunity when there's no screw up you know said, today yeah. we are really at uh, at the lowest Uh, and there is a positive of uh, boldness of ideas of uh, and a uh, and a uh, uh, abundance of fear so therefore this is the right time to make a mark as a, as a professional as as a as, as a mind that can kind of create a difference so this is the time to come to advertising um you know you have less opportunities when everybody is kind of producing great ideas you have uh, far more opportunities when nobody when very very few people are uh so i think this is actually the right time for us i think that's a very well made point because you know as you said uh when lots of good ideas are being produced then for your opportunity to shine uh, is lesser and at a time like this you know one good idea can really uh, make a career let me come to the uh, the nuances of uh, what you create balki and uh, let me talk about both advertising and uh, what you've done on the movie side of the business uh as i mentioned at the start uh, content consumption has changed drastically in the last 20 years uh, especially in the last 5 years thanks to explosion of data geo uh, people watching more on mobile phones youtube how has the uh, nuance of uh, curating content changed along with that one part of content curation is naturally the idea and as you said idea kind of the the core of the idea uh, uh, remains uh, irrespective of uh, uh you know the era but when it comes to execution what has changed in the last 10 years uh, given uh, how uh, consumption on across various screens has changed uh yeah except for some production uh, quality that to very basic production quality not all has changed actually uh we people keep looking at the 0.5% of uh 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 people uh, for 0.5% of all of us who are kind of consuming some great uh, series here uh, watching hbo watching some some of the top end uh, hindi series kind of produced on netflix or amazon or hotstar yeah. but the real things that are popular and are being consumed out there uh, according to the pundits which again i don't know i i always i always kind of i'm wary of, of people saying that they know the consumer atrocious series and atrocious videos as being the most popular and you'll say they have 1 billion views or some some stuff they could big figures like this and this is what and if you look at a content company and i've seen some of them today the way they kind of talk of the consumer is far worse than the, than what advertising agencies do they are segregating segregating mind psychographic demographics studying them this is all almost like scientifically manufactured content to appeal to so many minds it is impossible to do that you know almost uh, uh, it, it's 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 really crazy to do this kind of thing because uh, 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 it's not it's it's it how do i put it this way it's not so much the uh, uh, the um, uh the, the the quality of the content you know people are this kind of uh, uh um, let's say uh misled by what makes people watch a certain thing and they read something else as what is making them watch the thing and they may, and they kind of further the stuff that's what happened for television you know our television content for a very long time so far has been on this myth of 
so many people are watching so many people are watching this the same people watched bunyag uh, so many years back which was such uh, which was so much better why was our television right. content so much better 25 30 years back and why is it so bad right now it's not people have suddenly changed you keep feeding people that when you keep popularizing that obviously they're going to get used to something and obviously you think that that's what they like there is no evidence to say that if i kind of uh, feed people some thing else over a period of time thing like i'll give you a small example like uh, like chudels the 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 series on z5 which uh, which is a pakistani co-produced series um you know, with um, with some fantastic actors from pakistan it's such a beautiful bold uh, uh, uh popular series and um uh i'm not sure in a country like pakistan it's really repositioned uh, in fact that could that series could have actually imran khan should taken that series and sell and and tom tom it around the world and said hey look how progressive we are but they didn't do it there they're, they're as silly as us in a lot of ways so so but the fact of the matter is that is a very popular and that is a fantastic kind of a series take scam for example these are one or two examples which are coming in where yeah. a lot of people have liked a lot of a lot of uh, no a huge mass of people have liked it and uh, which are not the run of the mill kind of the thing which uh, so called even ott platforms are segregating into psychographics and demographics and all this kind of things are there so i'm very scared the ott ott side also in this desperation for viewership or uh, assumed viewership getting into the same path as a lot of other marketers as a lot of other brands who've gone through that hard way and come out and said in a strange way they, they learn to laugh at a lot of things like that a little bit more uh, than than content providers so it it's a very strange kind of a time even here even in this kind of uh, environment well the government certainly believes ott is uh, too bold for them uh, right now so there are attempts at regulating what uh, ott is being ott the content ott players are are, are putting out it's funny they're, they're going to be regulating they're going to be regulating what 0.5% of people watch they're going to be just regulating that they are, uh, i mean it's a, it's a waste of time well as you said that's the era we live in uh, let me uh, move to the uh, you know your latest uh, love which is movies balki and as you've been an ad man you work closely with brands tell us a few things that uh, you know uh, movies can teach uh, brands uh, brands have become as you said very safe they are uh, averse to taking risk especially when it comes to advertising movies have charted a very different territory especially in in india in the last 10 years what are the learnings that a movie business can give to brands and also advertising uh, folks in advertising i i don't think movies have a lot of advertising uh, because movies are also stuck in a in zone like a, if there's one bug which, which succeeds and everybody wants to do everybody's life or every incident that there is a newspaper they want to make it into a film so i i believe that movies are also kind of suffering from uh, uh, the lack of originality of content it's about creating it, mo- movies is just another is another canvas to create your own stuff it's not about just portraying stories it's about creating new stories it's about creating new characters it's about things it's just not about portraying yes there are some some lives you'd like to see something be clean but every alternate film cannot become that you know so i don't think i wouldn't say movies have a lot to teach advertising i think only advertising can teach advertising nobody else well said uh, uh, last question before uh, khyati takes over balki uh, covid has fundamentally changed uh, communication in a lot of ways movie wa- uh, movie making uh, might also see uh, changes unfortunately the business has been very hard hit what are the three four trends that you see uh, lasting post covid uh, which might have been in kind of uh, uh, you know their pre covid and now they get accentuated because of what's happened in this year um i think um i think as far as film is concerned the fundamental um, dilemma that uh, we're all faced with is not so much of how to shoot or where to shoot of course that is a that is more like okay in this country you can't but we have all begun shooting uh, a bit here there and it's, it's going faster and faster it's more where yeah. to kind of what is the future of that thing that you're trying to create because uh yes in the first wave a lot of ott kind of guys bought a lot of things that were like 
time in the cans will not be released or uh, they want to release no DT. But I'm saying economically, that's not going to be viable for very long. Yeah. The economics of the film industry are going to take a major hit. And, you know, big star vehicles uh, don't will not have the same kind of uh, uh, thrust on OTT like it has on, on, on the screen. So there is going to be a redefinition of economics, and that's where the confusion is. What is the future of our release? Uh, and how do we plan economics? Who's going to buy, who's going to watch, and what's the economics? Of it? That's the dilemma here more than anything else. Well, uh, uh, there have been instances where economic uh, uncertainty has actually fueled creativity in a, a lot of ways because lesser money has uh, meant people have had to kind of think of very creative ideas to engage audiences, isn't it? Uh, I think you should try telling the stars that because I think most of the money in, in Bollywood goes to stars. So therefore, uh, and it's not about creativity or anything else. It's not about, I don't think a lot of people spend on production uh, to right. kind of find strategic ways or creative ways to kind of cut short budgets. It's yeah. all about where the money goes. So that's a different discussion altogether, which has actually got nothing to do with creativity. Right. Thank you, Balki. Very engaging conversation. Unfortunately, we had only 30 minutes. Yes, Kyati, I hope you have some audience questions. Balki, stay with us. Kyati wants to take up some audience audience questions. Kyati, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoja and Mr. Balki. Thank you so much for uh, spending this time with us. We have two very pertinent questions from our audience that we'd like you to address. Uh, one question says, um, I've heard in future, scripts can be written by AI machine and the movies uh, can be made accordingly with more creativity in content. What is, What are your thoughts on this? What is, sec what is the second part of the question? And movies can be? That because of which the movies no. can be made more, uh, with more creativity in content. Uh, script can be made with artificial intelligence uh, and movies can be made with more creativity in content. I, I'm not so sure because with real intelligence itself, we're not producing such great stuff. I'm not sure what's going to happen with artificial intelligence. And um, uh, I, I'm not sure that that's a, that's a myth. Um, uh, that's, that's, a, that's wishful thinking. Like I sometimes, sometimes wish that I could just put uh, a thought into a machine it can come out as a film uh, and it will save so much labor and everything. It's one of those wishful thinking, nothing else. <laughs> All right. Uh, our, another question from the audience is that you mentioned how advertisements are becoming risk averse. Uh, also notice that almost every brand these days are going for a woke culture aspect for their ads. And uh, I believe this is important, but it also leads to lazy writing and thus the same concept being repeated. So how do you think new ad makers should proceed in the future? I don't think it's about risk averse. I, I, like I corrected myself when I was saying it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like to use the word risk averse. I think it's about less ambitious. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, I, and, I, and, I, and I believe the purpose of advertising, our purpose of any creative uh, field, uh, although advertising is commercial art and although advertising is supposed to sell products, you're supposed yeah. to, this is a chance for you to set, to, to kind of contribute something or to lead society or to put something back into lives that didn't exist or to give. Uh, give consumers a new kind of interest or a new or a new kind of a, and I think that's where it's not about continuously borrowing from culture or society as it is and saying hey this is how we live we all know that's how we live it can be very relevant but hey what's the new thing you're bringing to the party as a brand what's the new twist you're giving it to how are you leading us forward and that's what I think is more important right so sir last question from us would be that what theme do you think is going to be the future for content any concept theme that you think is going to yes originality or, or originality yeah all right <laughs> thank you so much mr balki for spending this time with us and being pleasure, here on content pleasure, pleasure thank you so much pleasure. thank you